Now, let's talk about the coronavirus as the outbreak continues to wreak havoc on uh, markets and industries around the world. Business are now uh, confronting significant and unique challenges. Successful navigation of these challenges will require thoughtful and comprehensive planning. Indeed, in the past week, the inevitable impact of the coronavi coronavirus on the sports industry has landed with a stunning blow. Built on live competition where large crowds come together to watch, professional and collegiate sports leagues around the globe in cascading effect have cancelled, suspended or postponed ongoing or imminent seasons. In the long Longer term, summer events like the UEFA Euro 2020 is already in jeopardy as it has been postponed till 2021. Now, the Tokyo 2020 Olympics is also another event we are not sure will hold or be postponed, but we keep our fingers crossed. Now, with these fast breaking developments mirroring the exponential spread of the coronavirus, it is essential that stakeholders in the sports and entertainment industry understand the various legal issues associated with the outbreak of this pandemic. Now, major sporting events, Steve, has been postponed all across the world. But I'm sure, because recently I read something about the English Premier League that uh, if they don't get to complete the league season at a certain period, they will have to pay a fine. And I'm wondering, is it that the people wanted to collect this fine from the English Premier League, don't they know about the outbreak of the coronavirus? Why do they still have to go ahead to take a fine from these um, football bodies? But of course, the show must go on. What must be, must be but there can be adjustments to all these things. But why, Let, let's see the legal implication of what this coronavirus has done to the world of sports. Okay, um, first of all, uh, there's something we we'll call uh, Pacta Sun Savanda. Pacta Sun Savanda is a concept okay. in contract law. What it simply means is that um, uh, each party must perform their respective obligations, contractual obligations, when they sign a contract. Now, what is the contract between the broadcasters and the Premier League? The contract is that um, the games must be played and that these games must be on TV. Mm. Now, a component of that agreement is also the fans, attendance at match mm. venues. So, like you said, nobody foresaw this kind of um, uh, event that has had the whole world reeling from the shock Mm -hmm. for the past few weeks or thereabouts, when the whole effects are manifesting in England. Now, what are the remedies to both clubs, uh, both the clubs and the broadcast sponsors? Now, the broadcast sponsors have paid about 4.9 billion uh, uh, pounds, pounds yeah. for four years. Now, the breakdown is that they pay over 1 billion pounds every season. Now, they pay upfront. And these monies, because there's a collective broadcast agreement between the clubs and the Premier League, mm. these monies are disbursed to each of the Premier League teams. And these monies have been shared since August, yes. when the league kicked yes. off. Wow. Yeah. Now, what do you want the broadcasters to do? They also have a contract by the side with the viewers who have subscribed to watch these games. Mm -hmm. What are they going to tell them? Recently, they came out with uh, a publication saying that, okay, that everybody, every subscriber to sports and, and uh, Sky Sports and BT Sports should have their subscription uh, freezed or frozen, sorry, um, for the period of this pandemic. Mm. Now, at no cost. So what it simply means is that BT Sports, the broadcasters are going to bear the cost of this freezing of wow. their subscription. So who is going to reimburse them? So these are the questions. And I'm sure they must have sought legal advice from their lawyers on the options. Now, there's something you call uh, force majeure clauses. I go out and people say, oh, force majeure would apply. Force majeure simply means, is a French word, simply means that um, with greater force. Mm. So what it simply means is, uh, is a doctrine that enables contracting parties to excuse or suspend performance of their obligations in a contract. Mm. So, um, using the Premier League and the broadcasters, for example, for instance, so you look at the contract between them. What the law stipulates is that they must expressly include that clause in their contract. Yeah. Is there a force majeure clause in the broadcast deal signed between BT Sports and Sky Sports on the one hand and the Premier League? We are not privy to such information. But even if there was a force majeure clause, did it include a pandemic. They did mm. include 
a quarantine order from the government. Now there's a heavy um, clamp down on public gatherings and yeah. um, uh, public contacts. So people are taking shelter in their respective houses. Those who are infected have been taken to the various diagnostic units yes. where they are treating them. Mm -hmm. So you now ask yourself, can the game still go on? Mm -hmm. Now, for first major to apply, first of all, there must be actual impossibility of performance, not onerous difficulty mm -hmm. of performance. So if, I, if the Premier League clubs are saying, oh, it will be difficult for us to go to the stadium, now, you have how many, how many teams? On the minimum, you have about 24 teams yeah. in your first team. So, and if there's nobody infected, why shouldn't you play the match? Play the match. You can play behind closed doors. We mm -hmm. saw that with UEFA. UEFA, UEFA played yeah. some of the matches, even the Syria A, before the clamp down came yeah. down from, came from the government and stopped them in their tracks. Mm -hmm. When players started getting infected and everything. So, is there, is there really... Um, a substitution because there's a, there's, a, there's a requirement that requires you, um, there's a provision for first measure that requires the person who is trying to take advantage of first measure to mitigate the damages mm. or make substitutions. So if you don't make substitutions, now there was also an alternative about um, going to play in the Midlands. Talk about Birmingham, yeah. Aston Villa and Wolverhampton. Yeah. So these, these areas are largely uh, safer areas when it comes to um, the yeah. pandemic in yes. England. So why haven't they considered this option? I'm sure that is what will be at the back of the minds of BT Sport and Sky Sports, mm -hmm. that these people have alternatives. They have alternatives to finish the game. We don't care how you do it, but our games must be on TV and you must complete the league. Yeah. And if you don't complete the league, you have to pay us this money. Yes. Yes. So in simple terms... The Premier League and the, and the teams, the constituent teams, can only rely on first major if, if what we are experiencing right now is contemplated. And they have to issue notice, they will issue notice to BT Sports and Sky Sports uh, expressly telling them why they cannot perform the contract. So it's only then that they will be able to take advantage of it and they must take reasonable and diligent, um, uh, explore reasonable and diligent alternatives yeah. to see whether they can mitigate the damages because BT and Sky Sports, they are losing a lot of money. True. So we cannot say that uh, with regards to our domestic league here yeah, because we don't have, we have a broadcast so, so. <laughs> uh, Forget about the, um, the, the exuberant TV. announcement mm. that was made in November saying that there's, a, there's an agreement with Next TV. There's nothing like that. So yes. they are not stepping on anybody's toes. So yes. they shouldn't be losing sleep over this kind of issues <laughs> right now. So, uh, but then uh, it will be very interesting to see uh, what will happen in the coming days because... Um, now the league has been pushed to April 30th. Yeah. Now what happens when you get to April 30th and <laughs> there's nothing on the show? Yes. No. Then you also look at the individual player contracts. Exactly. What happens to the manager's contracts? Because I was going to I was going to ask about I was going to ask about that. Now you, we, we say um, you, you said something about difficulty yes. or an impossibility yes. of playing, but this pandemic looks like an it, it has made it impossible. To play football, and as much as we have a couple of players, more than 20 players who can um, feature in a football match, 11 players on the football pitch, then the accurate number of substitutions. But you and I know this is almost an impossible mission because the coronavirus, the rate at which it's spreading, even some of these players have contracted the virus. Arsenal head coach Mikel Arteta yeah. was the first to be announced in England. So, what is um, the possibility or impossibility of other players contracting when they get on the football pitch? They will get to touch themselves. We see a lot of players spitting on the football pitch. It's a contact sport. Yes. So the best way to do this is to avoid anything football for now, anything sports for now. So I feel like in the contract, these other parties should understand that this is a situation on ground. There's nothing we can do about it. I also heard that um, the FA is planning to make sure that they finish the league on or before the 30th of June than the transfer market because most of these players, like you talk about player contracts, most of their contracts would right. run down yeah. by the 30th of June. Correct. Then on the 1st of July, probably they sign a new contract or they let them go, the transfer window opens and all that. But one thing is for sure, there's going to be topsy-turvy in the world of sports, especially the transfer window and how the league will end. There was also a rumor that I don't want to agree with to null and void the English Premier League, meaning that if that happens, 
Liverpool will not be announced as the winners of Correct. the, uh, the, uh, the EPL. Yes. So it's crisis left, right, and center. And I think the best way to do this is all parties should sit down at the round table and say, OK, nobody knows when this whole coronavirus thing will be wiped out of the whole world. So let's hold on for now. Prevention, they say, is better than cure. Forget about the game for now. OK, uh, I agree with you. Hmm. Uh, life should come first. Definitely. But like I said from the outset, um, humongous investments have been made by these broadcasters. I agree. So now, what the law, the law wouldn't require performance, strict performance by the teams. Mm. That, okay, by insisting that, okay, you should go and play the games regardless of the difficulty. What BT Sports and Sky Sports are saying is simply, give me back my money. <laughs> How can that be difficult? Mm. Now, incidentally, um, even in 2008, when we had the global financial uh, downturn, the courts have held severally that uh, when it comes to payment of money, mm. that you cannot, you cannot rely on such events as by saying no, that you cannot pay your money, not be able to pay money. What the law requires is if you cannot perform, quantify what you are going to do in damages and pay me back my money. That's simply what BT Sports and Sky Sports are saying. Mm. You can't invest one over a billion dollar, uh, pounds. And then expect me to go to sleep and say, okay, yes, because the game cannot go on, everybody should go. Mm. So we should also play the devil's advocate for a while. Permit me if I'm holding brief for the broadcast sponsors. Mm. But that is a, whole, a lot of money for anybody Definitely. to, yes. to, to forego. Okay. Let's take it down to Turkey now and talk about um, John Mikhail Obi. Still based on the legal implication of things happening concerning the, in connection with the coronavirus, Mikhail came out and said to the Turkish Football Association that it is wrong for us to play under this unconducive condition. Why can't the league be postponed the same way other leagues have been postponed across the world? And um, he also went on to say that he can't play in such environments. The next day we heard that his contract was terminated with Trazonspor. And he also said that he would never go back to playing for them again. He has a two-year contract, a free agent. He has done one year. He remains one more year. And he's no longer playing for the Charles and Sports team in Turkey. And on Thursday, the league was put on hold. Now, who should be faulted? With this? Is it Mikel's fault that he came out to speak? I know, yes, in his contract, he's not supposed to say some kind of things to the media. But was it wrong to call out uh, for attention on the Turkish league? Okay, first of all, I'll take you back to um, an incident that happened before, before uh, the announcement about mm -hmm. the termination of his contract. contract. Um, uh, Charles Bonspoor played a game over the weekend where Mikel, Mikel was meant to come on as a substitute. He refused. That was what necessitated a meeting between him and the club president. The club president summoned him and said, come, what are you doing? That was after he posted on his inter Instagram page Instagram you know, uh, criticizing the Turkish FA and everything. But again, look at Charles Bonspoor. Charles Bonspoor has not won the title in years. They are on top of the league. Exactly. They are looking to get their first silverware in decades. So, and somebody is um, putting up an act of petulance. Mm -hmm. That's what Mikel has done. But again, you look at it, is what he has done justified? Mm. Perhaps he shouldn't have put it on social media. True. Perhaps he should have just maybe granted interviews to the journalists and said, oh, uh, I'm c completely condemning what the Turkish FA and the, and the club are doing in this regard, that they're not putting the health of uh, players yes. first. Now, you have a duty as a player, first of all, uh, as an employee of the club, you have a duty to obey reasonable instructions. Now, part of the reasonable instructions, I would imagine, is putting up such kind of posts on social media. That is wrong. Then on the part of Transbond Sport, there's a duty, there's an implied duty to guarantee the health and safety of your players. players. Now, and that includes ensuring that you don't expose them to a pandemic mm -hmm. like this, that is spreading like wildfire all over the world. Now they have done that, they have exposed their players and punished somebody who dared to speak up about it. Now, that is a constructive dismissal. It, uh, something came out the other time when they were saying, oh, that the, his contract was terminated by mutual consent. There's no such thing as, as termination mutual by mutual consent. There's always somebody at, the, at, the, at, the, at one end of the spectrum who is dictating terms and saying, young man, this is what I'm putting on the table for you. If you don't like it, you can, you can go ahead and go. Mm. Now, um, 
Mikel, from what I heard, was not paid any compensation. Now, if you are saying that he was mutually terminated, the event that, okay, that perhaps Mikel's uh, views were sought as to, okay, uh, where do we go from here? Do you still want to play for the club or not? And he says, I don't want to play for the club. That is not termination. Mikel has not terminated his contract. What happened is a constructive dismissal. Mm. And going by the events of Thursday, where they eventually had to bow down to coronavirus <laughs> by suspending the league, yeah. Mikel should take them to CAS. True. Mikel should take them to CAS and seek damages for constructive dismissal. Hmm. His contract was not terminated. Wow. So I, I'm hoping I'm hoping that he takes that line of action just so to um, send a message to most of the clubs because it's not just in Turkey. In Brazil, Grêmio, Grêmio put face masks. The Grêmio players put face masks over the weekend when they were playing playing in the Brazilian uh, Premier uh, Division. Yeah. They put face masks to to protest the decision of the Brazilian FA to expose them to such risk. Hmm. 